to Lethal Hammer's channel. Today I wanted to create a video on Water Cooling 101. I get a lot of people sending me messages and emails on they you know they just don't understand water cooling when everything's in the system. So I have lots of extra parts. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna build a water cooling system outside of the case and show you exactly how to connect it, what kind of order you might want to go in, what might make sense, etc. etc. So straight in down forward what we have is one we have our reservoir this is an XSPC um, you know it's a bay reservoir they do make these that have pumps already installed great starter um, kickoff reservoir for people doing a single or dual loop in a case um, what I have here is a black ice um, what is this a 240 radiator I have some fans on there so you can kind of see what it looks like with the fans on it with obviously barb fittings and connections here. We have our 350 pump with a um, Accental EK block on it, our top, just to give us some better flow. And I don't have any extra water blocks, so what I did is I created a generic pretend this is a CPU water block uh, for the case of building this out. Okay? So, being that I want to just be as straightforward as possible, um, in this water loop, um, I should also mention we have half inch to three quarter inch tubing. Um, most people use three eighths inch, which is perfectly fine for a single loop. Um, I like the more flow, but just know going with a half inch, three quarter inch, you're not going to be able to get as tight turns as you would want. The nice thing about this Primo Chill tubing is it actually bends a lot better without kinking than most. You'll see I can get a pretty tight circle here without too much of a kink. See right there you'll see kinking at this point right here. You know, and you go any sharper it's completely kinked. That would cause terrible flow. But um, for a half inch, three quarter inch pipe, you know, a loop like that, that's a pretty solid loop without any kinking going on. So I love this tubing. It comes in all different colors, clear, colored, you know, blue, red, green, yellow. Um, they do all sorts of stuff. So but again, the first thing again that you want to do is, one, we have our components, we have our um, reservoir, we have our radiator, and we have our pump and our block, our pretend block, I guess you can say. Um, one thing that you need to most notably uh, know is, if you go with if you go with a pump without a top, so here I installed a, a top on here, but if you go with a pump without a top, you can eliminate two connections or two extra fittings from your loop. So here's what this this pump looked like before, has built in. The problem is, is that these are 3 8 inch. So again, I went uh, half inch, 3 quarter, so I had to go with the top in this case. Um, but know that you need you need fittings for just about everything. So you're going to need fittings from your pump. You're going to need fittings to your your CPU block. You need fittings to your radiator. You need fittings to your um, reservoir. Now, in this case, the sites that I purchased most of my items from, the reservoir came with some barb fittings where they gave you an option to choose what size. So like three eighths inch, half inch, whatever size you want. Same with um, Black Ice. They ship all their uh, radiators with also with fittings and you choose what side you want, 3 8 inch, half inch, etc. So you can choose those off the get-go, you don't really have to buy any extra fittings, you just buy the radiator and reservoir, fittings are there. You will need to buy fittings for your CPU block or GPU block, whatever you're getting. In this case we're going to pretend this is a, a CPU block. Um, and again if you go with the top, you'll obviously need to buy the top and the fittings for the pump. Um, the other thing is the tubing. So, again, depending on how big your case is, I always order about 10 feet of tubing. Um, reason for that, it's a lot of tubing. It's more than you'll ever need, but, you know, every once in a while you might cut a piece that's a fairly long, and it might not be the right size. And the worst thing you can do is get halfway through your project and be two inches short on tubing. So, uh, tubing's pretty inexpensive. I think it's like a buck fifty a foot. You know, spend the 15, 20 bucks, get enough tubing, make sure you have excess. It never hurts. Um, but simply what I normally do is I build the system in the case. So I'll put the, um, the reservoir, I'll put the radiator, I'll just loosely mount them 
usually on the um, reservoir here I'll just slide it into the bay on the radiator I'll just put enough screws to hold it on there and I'll get distances for my tubing so I'll take my tubing and let's just pretend this isn't the case here so you know I, I line it up with you know where it's at and get a good measurement I use my handy dandy scissors and bam you know you have a rough estimate of how big your tubing is so let's just say for here for this instance um, I'm, I'll explain the order of how I'm connecting things in a moment but you see it can be a little tough sometimes to hook that up but usually you have to map out your flow so I'll go from pump to radiator from radiator to the block to the block back to the reservoir and then the reservoir obviously goes back into the pump simple as that um, but then what I'll do is you know I figure out the distances in the case and mock up and then I pull everything out of the case and I connect it all and do a leak test let's just connect it all up real quick and see I'm using barb fittings uh, just to make this easy so you slide your connector You can you can tell like I mean this isn't too terribly hard but you can see how once you get these components in a case it can uh, it can cause some fun in trying to tighten things up so again this is just generic outside of the case but there we go sorry I got things propped up so at least it's all there. So, make sure we get the camera right. So, we have from our pump down here, which is kind of hard to see now, to the radiator, out the radiator to the block, to the block and to the reservoir, out from the reservoir to the pump. So, that's literally how you hook it up. I mean, there's, there's nothing more to it than that. So, again, going with different uh, components that you can get out there move this a little bit with all the different components you can get you can really change how you want to connect things up now another reason why I like these XPC uh, bay reservoirs is because it allows you to bleed them properly you can use all sorts of different um, liquids in your system a lot of people use just regular distilled water and put uh, the additives in there. It's the cheapest way to go. Um, I like to be safer than sorry and just get the premix. I like PCI. They say it's a non-conductive liquid, so if it does leak, it's not going to ruin your components. Um, I don't know if I trust any liquid, regardless if they say it's non-conductive ever. Uh, but I like PCI. It's been a great product for me. I swap it out of my system every six months regardless uh, of how the fluid looks just to keep the liquid fresh um, but it's really simple and straightforward but here I'll go ahead and open this up and literally I'm going to show you how to prime your system so I verified all my connections we can verify them again and make sure they're not going to leak on us seems to be connected again it's not the perfect setup but this is just for uh, to show you guys exactly what it's going to look like there we go so usually what I'll do is way before you'll have no power plugged up into anything at this point but you see I have the fluid started um, obviously there's fluid going into the pump you always want to make sure you have a little liquid in the pump and the reason for that is if it's not primed you will wear the bearings out on the inside and instantly destroy your your pump so you always want to make sure that there's fluid in there and then what I do is I have my power supply out of the case and Antec, there's quite a few companies that make these, but it's a power supply tester. 
uh, you plug it into your power supply and it allows you to turn it on outside the case without it being plugged into the motherboard. Um, I use these religiously, especially when water cooling, because to test outside your case it makes it a little crazy. So I have my power supply cable. Go ahead and plug my pump in. And literally, you turn it on. You see, my pump is sucking water. And you just want to make sure this reservoir stays nice and full until your loop is fully primed. You see, I'm adding liquid. Most of the time, I'll turn it on, let the water get in there, turn it off. I don't know if you can see the water bubble starting right there, but there was some fluid in there, but it wasn't sucking all the way because there's sucked water there for a second, or air for a second. If I'll turn it back on, you'll see air bubbles coming through here. You can also see with our loop, you can see the air bubbles going through. And look at the, the reservoir. Uh, liquid's obviously just flowing in there real quick. See there's a lot of air. You just slowly fill it up with you know your liquid. And the nice thing about this is as long as your liquid's higher than the catch basin in this uh, reservoir, the air just gets captured here and falls out of the system. Um, so you see here you know you can check all your connections, make sure you have no leaks pretty straightforward so this pump doesn't have a speed control so I can't slow it down unfortunately and because it's such tight proximity it's flowing really fast um, let me take this off the tripod and you'll see you can see how the the liquid is just blasting into the reservoir right now and if you can also see the loop um, I don't know if you can see the liquid but the air bubbles are still cycling through the system. So I'll go ahead and turn it off one more time. See if we can get a good view of it slowed down. So you see the pump is off. There's lots of air, foam. Turn this back on. And usually what I'll do is, I typically, once it's in the system, um, I like to turn on and off the, you know, you'll always use the power supply uh, tester until you've water until you've gotten your full loop set up and ready to go. Um, but uh, I turn it on and off quite a few times beforehand when I'm setting it up just to make sure I get air bubbles. Like, you see, I sprung a leak. The the barb fitting up here wasn't all the way tight, so it was a. Uh, leaking a little bit. So again it just shows you right there that it pays to test and make sure it's it's not leaking out of the case before you put it in there so you know you can look at that and be like oh wow I didn't tighten that out you know like I thought I did so but there you have it you know putting together a system again um, testing it outside the case making sure it works and it's really straightforward, really easy, you know, water cooling 101, just getting it set up. I mean, if you have multiple items, you know, you go from, you know, this pretend block to your next block and and just add it to the loop or add more radiators, etc. So, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks uh, again, Lethal Hammer's channel, and check out LethalPC.com for more information on water cooling reviews and products.